Okay, so yesterday we talked about if two drawings could be scale copies. Today we're talk going to see if we can apply that then to some things that look a lot like each other. So which of these are in fact scale copies of each other? Let's review from yesterday. We want to look for corresponding parts, which would be parts that are in the same place. So let's mark some things that are in the same place as each other. In this shape we've got this in the same place and that and that and that and then let's look for another corresponding part. Mm, let's look at this top bar and really to be sure you want to look at all the corresponding parts. So let's mark everything that's corresponding. And to be really systematic, you do want to go through this and do them for all, unless you see specific relationships where you're like, oh, it's the same piece, whether or not, depending on which side it is. But let's make sure we're on the same page first. And then we've got three more. Mm -hmm. Here. Ah, see that one looks like the, on the other side, the same as the other side. And last, here. So we have all of our corresponding parts marked in these. Now we want to see if we can find a scale factor. And if you remember, a scale factor is something that you can multiply to get from one to the other. So since we've got our little ones, we can think about multiplying up doubling or tripling or something to get up to the to the other ones. So let's look for those at those corresponding parts. Well, in this one, let's just start with A. If I went from A to E looking at the kind of turquoise corresponding part, I would be going from a from one square to a side length of one square. So that would be times one. But then if I came down to this light blue, so that would be times one. But then if I came down to the, the light blue, that would be from 2 up to 3, which is not times 1. And that would be times 3 halves to get up there. So since we have two different things that are being multiplied, those two could not be scale copies. So that doesn't work. Hmm. Okay, so then let's look from A to another one. If we go from 1 on that to over here, that's going to be times 2. It's doubled. And if we look at, how about that light blue again? We go from 2, and that was 2 and a half. We're going to end up, see, it's a little bit over. It's not right on the line, it's across the line, it's halfway up, over. 2 and a half to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that would also be times 2. And then let's check the other ones. Across the top, we have 3. And across the top over here we have 6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That would also be times 2. So then these two are scale copies where the scale factors from A to C, A to C would be times 2. Now let's look at E and I and see if these are scale copies. Going from this side length of 1 over here to 2, that would be times 2. Across the bottom we're going from 3 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That would be times 2. And then if we keep looking, 1 to 2, 3 to 6, 1 to 2, 4 to 8. So this one, these two also have a scale factor of times 2, and they are scale copies. Okay, so while all of these looked pretty similar to each other, they were all kind of long and skinny. They are not all scale copies of each other. You have to find the ones that have exactly the same scale factor going from every single side length to the corresponding side length of that other drawing. So that's a good way to be sure and have a little bit more subtlety and nuance when you are looking at um, things that already look pretty similar to each other. Okay. So now let's look at what might have been done here.
we have an original, and then we have two potential scale copies. And, well, that's annoying. Let's try that again. We have an original. And we have two potential scale copies. Okay, so let's mark our original. And we have copy one and we have copy two. So what happened in each of these? Do they both look like they're scale copies of the original? People looking at this pretty quickly had the gut reaction that copy one could not be a scale copy because in the original there wasn't this massive hole on this kind of bottom right side. Copy two does look much more like a scale copy because it looks similar, but we can go back to what we just talked about and see does it actually have a scale factor. So if we look at corresponding sides from 15 to five, that would be dividing by three or multiplying by one third. To go from 18 to six, same deal, 36 to 12, 30 to 10, 21 to seven, 12 to four. So it has a scale factor that would be times one third, taking a third of that original or dividing all the side lengths in that original by three. So that one is a scale copy. In here, what did they do? How did this person end up with something that looked like this? They thought they were making a scale copy. So they went from 18 to 8, 36 to 26, 30 to 20, 21 to 11, 12 to 2, 15 to 5. In each case, they subtracted 10 from the side length to the corresponding side length in their copy. Subtracting 10 to all sides might have felt right because they were doing the same thing to every side. But in subtracting, they ended up changing what that shape looked like. You now had holes. You had side lengths that don't match up anymore. So where multiplying and dividing does work to get you a scale copy, it looks like subtracting does not work to get you a scale copy, even though you're doing the same thing to all sides. So we want to, when we're doing scale copies, we want to look at multiplying or dividing. Now let's take this to making scale copies. So, we've got an original set of drawings. And then we are given a scale factor that we should use. So in this case, for the first few, I'm being asked to use a scale factor of two, which would be the same as doubling. And in the second set, I'm being asked to do a scale factor of one half, which would be the same as cutting things in half. So looking at this, I already know that my first two, A and B, should get bigger, and my second two, C and D, should be getting smaller. So looking at A, I'm going to pay attention to side lengths. This side length here was three long, and this side length here was three high. So I want to make something that's going to be two times as long and two times as high. I'm going to multiply by two. So I'm now going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to need to go up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need to preserve this angle, and we see we've got a right angle here, and I've still got a right angle right here. Now looking at the side length here, we have two, so down here it's going to need to be one, two, three, four. And at this point, I can just connect. I didn't actually have to use measurement to get this final side because I'm just connecting these and it's going to end up being twice as long because all of the other ones were twice as long. Now, this N, kind of weird N or heart rate shape, it was a little bit tricky for people because a lot of people noticed that this one was going to become a two long, for example, and they noticed that this three up was going to become six up. But how far do we need to go over here? So in here we're going over two. That means that over here I want to be going over four because it's times two. And then we noticed going down, if you look at where we are kind of going across here, 
this came down one, which means that on this side, I'm going to want to come down two. So I'm going to need to make sure that one, two, three, four, and then two down. That I end that kind of bottom tip of the end down there. So then I can start connecting dots. If I had this length, I can go from the top to the bottom here. If I have this, that was three. Now it's going to go up six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then this that was going over two, I'm going to need to multiply by two, and I'm going to end up going over four. For the ones where I'm cutting everything in half, that tells me that every single length is going to have to be half as long. So if something is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, now it's going to have to be half of that. And if I'm not sure what half is, then I can just take it and cut it in half. And that puts me at three and a half. Okay, so I'm going to come down and I'm going to do three and then just a half there. And then if the length here was two, I'm going to cut that in half. So I'm going to come over. And then if it was four, I'm going to need to come down two. Ooh, so that's going to be tricky because I was halfway. So I'm going to go one and another one down. I'm going to end up halfway. Three over, I'm going to need to cut that in half. So it'll be one and a half. So you notice I'm kind of now in the middle of some of my grids. Two is going to be one, so I'm going to have to come halfway. So this one's just like right in the middle of that box. One is only going to go over a half. Ooh, nice. That takes me to the grid. One, two, three, four, five. I'll have to come down two and a half. Ah, that brings me back down to where we started. And then we can check. One, two, three, four, five, six is going to become three. Okay, so for any of these, uh, and I can leave two for you to try on your own using the same ideas that we used for C. Um, but for any of these, you want to take every single side length and apply that same rule, that scale factor of times two, times one half, whatever you are given to every single side length, and you'll end up with something that is an exact copy.